Hello folks and welcome back to the Advantage Line. As Paul Mawadi would say, your one-stop shop for all things NRL and Rugby League and Rugby League World Cup. My name is Carl Tiley. As you can see, Paul Mawate is not here. The big fella is on leave. Uh, spending his $17.50 that he won during the NRL season. Uh, well done to you, Paul. But I am joined by the Prince of Papa Moore, Blake Ashford. Blake, how are you, man? Good, man. Just been at the under-16s and 18s National Youth Tournament for the week. So some good talent in New Zealand. But I'm here to talk about all things World Cup, aren't we? We are, we are. That's good to hear. Good to know for the WAS, hopefully. Uh, speaking of the WAS, uh, we can't go an episode without mentioning them or mentioning Ben Surly. Surly, how's it going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Actually just got off listening to Blake call, call the final. So that was great entertainment and a, and a good game. Some strong footballers out there and in, in amongst the young bucks. So looks like the Warriors have signed a few of them as well. So things the future looks bright. How does the, how does the big fella go on the mic? Yeah, good. He didn't seem rattled at all, really. There's a few expert opinions, you know. He more chimes in, picks his moments. But no, the pronunciation of the names, too. There were some tough ones in there. He nailed it. Thanks, mate. Hey, look, it's a lot harder during the week when I'm not on Sky and you're, you're there by yourself doing it. You sort of <laughs> find yourself talking to yourself, going a bit crazy. When else there's someone there doing it, it's uh, with you. It's a lot easier. Down this side line. <laughs> <laughs> Got to I throw see one out, game. I saw a great photo of you uh, high up in a cherry picker, Blake. Was that were you sort of combining Fox Tracker and and Aish View or something like? Yeah, yeah. Press the yellow button, you get Aish's view. Aish bits, <laughs> unexperted comments, and not required comments, but you'll have them anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. Uh, we've got a, a pretty big, heavy show to get through uh, today, so we'll rip in. Um, I want to start. Let me look at a few of the uh, World Cup warm-up games last week. Hopefully you guys got a chance to have a look or at least uh, cheat and see some of the highlights or do some reading. Mm -hmm. First of all, the uh, host nation, England, put an absolute number on Fiji. They won 50-0. Uh, Dominic Young might be the best ring in the world. <laughs> Had a heck of a game. Um, what... Surly, I'll go to you first. What do, what do you take out of this game for for both teams, England and Fiji? I think it was disappointing for Fiji. Obviously, they were out probably three of their biggest names in Kikau, Coruscant and Sivo. But in saying that, England were without Tompkins and Bateman as well. So they were hardly full strength. But I think it just goes to show that a lot of people, probably including myself as well, kind of underestimating England, putting them in that second tier. But I think that performance from them showed at home uh, they look well established and pretty well organised and settled. I think they're going to be pretty hard to beat, especially once the crowd gets out there and really gets behind them. But disappointing for Fiji. I uh, didn't expect them to win, but I expected it to be a little bit closer than that. Yeah, Blake, what about you? I, I think it's sort of on the Fiji side. I think this is sort of where we're going to see them this tournament. Uh, we saw the mid-test, uh, uh, the, the test during the middle of the year and got beaten quite comfortably by PNG in the end. And it just sort of seems like, I think it was the last episode we spoke about, it was them, Australia, England, New Zealand, always the last four for many World Cups. I think, you know, this is the one where it does change. And I don't think we find Fiji there um, in the top four. I think they'll take a step down. Certainly touched on England. That's why I think you and me, Carl, are so high on England, especially this first game against Samoa, because it's, in England, they don't have to travel. They get the playing conditions that they've played in all year. And 50-0, it's just a dominant display. You've got Bateman, who I would dare say run most of the show when he gets back in there, playing Locke and Tompkins, who's been man of steel before. So, look, they're going to be hard to beat England. And I think Fiji take a step back in this tournament. Yeah, I agree. I think the I think England, will be, as most teams do, take... Um, the most out of that sort of zero on the other side of the scoreline rather than the 50 that they piled on. Um, I mentioned Dom Young scored the first, set up the next two, uh, and was just dominant. Um, not, I'll talk a little bit more about Dom Young later, but not uh, something many would have expected, I'd say, Blake. 
Yeah, but it, I, this takes me back to why I'm not so high on Samoa as well, because everyone's talking about the Penrith players, the Penrith players. They, they're good as a team, Penrith. But you take dribs and drabs out, their best player, the seven, can't even make the Aussie team. And then you've got Dom Young, who's playing for a, no, a no, Newcastle. No, 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 no. Then you've got their best, uh, you've got Newcastle, who you're raving about Dom Young, who's not really surrounded by the best players putting him work. You chuck him in an England side that's full of stars, you watch the talent go. Like, it's it speaks for itself, I think. Silly, you had something to say there? Well, Clary's not playing this week because they're not playing any of their grand final players. I think surely we all agree that he would be starting in the seven jersey for Australia. Or not the seven, probably the 22 with the way they're doing it at the moment. But a charity. I think he'd be starting in the halves. But on Dom Young, I think it's awesome. Many were saying he wasn't going to make the team. I think he was getting ready to play for Jamaica. And after seeing them turn out on the weekend, I think he'll be pretty relieved that he's in the English squad. But... Yeah, he's one of those strong footballers, a good, strong ball runner. So I think he'll be handy for England. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next cab off the rank, Kiwis. 74 leads nil. Um, probably the expected result. Maybe not the scoreline. Um, mm. It was... Oh, I watched this game and I thought early doors, the Kiwis probably a little bit sloppy. There was a bit of... Um, a few drop balls and mistakes and but once they clicked into gear silly they uh well i don't know like leeds are a pretty good team i know it's a step up it's international but some of those combinations they do look very good yeah i think leeds were missing a couple through internationals and injury as well but still to put what 74 on a team and, and hold them to nil is really impressive and for me i think the best thing was there's a few guys in there that have probably had what, three to four, maybe even more weeks off footy? And look, not a lot of international footy together. The Kiwis, they don't play that often. So to see them kind of hit their straps that quickly and roll through, like Big Nelson, he was insane. He was, what, four or five guys every time, offloads. That was awesome to see. And then the highlight for me was just Thomas Lulawai, obviously. What a send-off. I think, what, 20 years or 19 years playing top grade. It's crazy. In the NRL when he debuted he was up against guys like Talis and that which seems like so long ago so the fact he's just hung up his boots goes out as skipper just a true legend of, of the kiwis and rugby league over here so that was great to see and then a few guys put their hands up too i thought sebastian chris was really good as well so maybe he got that center jersey but yeah encouraging signs for the kiwis with plenty more cattle to be added back in yeah like your your thoughts yeah it's um uh, majority of the games it was sort of for those players that like we see the same in the Tongan France game which we'll cover next but a lot of the players that haven't played for the last month got to just get you know the cobwebs out and it was good to see they had like Willie Isa there uh Dean Fare there still ready to play and fill in and like Surly said Thomas Luluai like I was lucky enough to play with him and you ask anyone he's one of the great blokes um uh, been there been amongst many clubs and I saw a stat the other day he played against Lockyer and Lockyer was still playing at fullback. So he actually played and debuted before Lockyer made the move to 5'8". So that's how long he's been around. And it was good because they were even calling for him to stay on. Maybe if there's an injury to the halves and why not? We spoke about this last week. If one half goes down, oh, man, that's where I think it will hurt the Kiwis. But going to the game... For me, the ball movement was exceptional, and Britain Nakora really stood up. I know we spoke about Isaiah Papali'i, yep, and um, and Kenny Bromwich. Maybe they might be the first choice, but Britain Nakora's lines, like you were just touching on, Carl, they were exceptional. I think he really stood up and gave Madge something to think about. Yeah, I agree. He was he he, he cuts it from the back fence every time, and his his try was uh, that line. The speed, it was it was pretty good to watch. Another one, you mentioned Sebastian Chris, maybe played himself into a centre role. The other one for mine that stood up, uh, Chance, nickel clock start, or as the um, the commentator called him, Chansey. Chansey. I, I, I think he had, a, he had a massive game. Uh, majority of it at fullback, I think shifted to left centre late in the game. Scored a couple of tries. Talk about a guy that hasn't played uh, a lot of football lately. He's been playing in the lower ranks of the NRL. For one, gets me excited as, as a Waz fan for next year. But two, I think he 
yeah, he, he's a great player and he offers a lot of versatility for that Kiwis team. Yep. I don't disagree. I think he's um, on the Warriors side of things. It's going to be good, as you know, Reese Walsh is gone and you've got a fullback in a centre position up for grabs. And then you've also look at the Kiwis. And if there is a half go down, I think one of you boys mentioned it last week, Joey Manu could easily switch into the halves where he puts his hand up as the best half in the world. And then you chuck Chance back at fullback. So, so it's a good headache to have for Madge. Yep. Uh, silly. Tonga, 48. France, 12. Uh, David Fafita, very good rugby league player. Yeah. Who knew? Big human. <laughs> One of the many big humans in their Tongan side. But to be fair, first half, I thought they were really patchy, but they're probably another side that. I think like this just shows how much you need these hit outs, which was probably the most disappointing thing for me with the Samoan side. Obviously, last week I was huge on them, kind of flipped, and I think England beat them this weekend just because these games are important for hit outs. Guys need to get their feet back under them, and I think that first half from Tonga kind of showed that second half they stepped up and they were way too classy in the end and got a comfortable win. I think Blake mentioned last week, uh, Tolatau Kola, he was going to be in for a big tournament. I think we saw those glimpses of him. He could really run amok this competition. So, yeah, Tonga will be right up there. First 40 wasn't that impressed. Second 40, they started to look a bit more like themselves and those big boys just rolled their sleeves up and it was game over from there. Blake, I made a note here. Um, of the nine tries that Tonga scored, eight were down the right-hand side. Hmm. Is that a concern for anyone or for them or is that just how the cookie crumbles on a, in a match like this yeah look I, I think it's much like the kiwis game as in tonga had like albert vetti mahe fanua players like that that have played over in england just to fill the numbers because we spoke like once again we'll probably keep touching on it but it was more a game for the blokes that haven't played and maybe that's just the way they saw a deficiency in um France's line, I suppose, and just went and just kept attacking down that side because, I mean, I don't see, like I said last week, I'm really high on Tonga. I think their forward pack's just as good on the left-hand side of the field, the right-hand side, and through the middle. So I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, but, yeah, it was, it's good to see, you know, that my money's gone to the right place in Tonga. Tell you what, Conrad Hurrell looked uh, pretty quick and devastating down that right-hand side. Bag's not tackling him. <laughs> Um, next one I had here, Wales 22, Lebanon 38. I've just handpicked this one um, mm -hmm. because Lebanon, I think, uh, might go okay this year. The only sort of real note I could find is that Lebanon scored eight tries, and that's about it. I couldn't find any highlights. Um, if you guys could enlighten us with anything else, otherwise we'll move on. I watched the highlights. Um, good to see Josh Mansour grab a, a couple. I think he's underrated, man. He can still play, eh? And it's kind of tough. Like, he, he was playing origin footy, and then he's kind of dropped off the planet of the earth, and he kind of holds that 18-19 spot for the bunnies each week. But good to see him on the end of a few Adam Dewey long balls. And, yeah, mm. I think that, that halves combination in particular for them makes them a team you have to consider for the quarterfinals. And I'm excited to see how they go this week with Moses back on deck. Yeah, that, that, that's all I really had, really. Like, they, they, they're going to go okay this year. I remember the last World Cup that was played over this side of the world, and they, they didn't go too bad. They had a couple of young bucks playing Farah's last hurrah. Like, they had a decent crack at it, and I think they could possibly make it through the pool stages. Obviously, I don't think they're good enough to beat New Zealand, but, I mean, we'll get into that shortly, but I think they can knock off Ireland. Yep, agree. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look at the pools. Um, now, I'm going to ask you guys, I think these are pretty much certain. I imagine we'll land on the same teams for majority of the part, but I'm going to ask you who's going through, who's a chance of missing out, and is there any team sort of unexpected that we should be looking out for? So, Paul A, England, France, Samoa, Greece. Uh, I dare say we'd all be going England, Samoa. Yeah. Yeah, tough to see Greece get the draw with the Bradford Bills. That was a... Uh... Interesting result. Don't yeah. know about the Greek lads, to be fair, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I landed on that too. I think France have been good in the past. They just need some of those imported players that live over there. I've seen Samasoni Lange, who's a former Tongan 
a Tongan international has found his way off, has found his way into the side. So they need a couple more though. Yeah, interesting enough, I was having a look at uh, the records of the World Cup and teams where they finished top four. France has the most, uh, I believe, fourth place finishes of any uh, country in the Rugby League World Cup. There you go, fun fact from the stat man. Um, Paul B, Australia, Fiji, Italy, Scotland, Australia and Fiji, right? Yeah, with Scotland pushing them a little, but I think Fiji will be too good. Yeah, I, yeah, Fiji will be too good to get that second spot, I believe. But I, close games against Italy and Scotland, I think both teams can really rattle uh, Fiji if they can handle their power. Yep, I agree too. Uh, Paul C, New Zealand, Ireland, Lebanon, Jamaica. This probably not the greatest uh, prep for the Kiwis heading into the, mm. the quarters. Um, should be three relatively easy wins with probably Lebanon putting up the biggest fight, I would imagine. And for me, I've got Lebanon going through as the second team in this pool. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Just because of their halves pairing, really, just Dewey and Moses, I think they'll have a massive impact. Oh, Luke Carey's playing for Ireland, but apart from that, I don't think they have enough kind of surrounding them to get the job done. So I'll back those two in just because they're world class even in the NRL. So Yeah, I've, I've gone the same. And Ireland, uh, it, it's going to come down to that match, isn't it? Ireland versus mm -hmm. Lebanon. Uh, whoever mm -hmm. stands up in that 80 minutes of football, that's what's the best thing about this, that it's going to be one game, 80 minutes, that decide the pool play. Oh, excuse me, I just lost my microphone. I wonder what the uh, points for and against New Zealand will finish with through cool. the pool play. Eh? She could be huge. Eh? But what are even the odds that we don't concede over 10 points total in those games? Oh, Even through their quarterfinals, New Zealand, I don't think it's till they play Australia where they actually face a test. So that mm. could be the reason why they don't go through. Mm. Confidence would be high, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having, having scored 600 and only made in 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, the final pool, Pool D, Tonga, PG, PNG, the Cook Islands and Wales. Tonga 1, I think PNG 2. Yeah. Cook Islands probably not strong enough uh, for mine. And Wales, no chance. Yeah, Cook Islands need their, if they get their full team, but it's, you know, Samoa and Tonga just getting their full capacity of players at the moment. So Cook Islands might have to wait a couple more years to get that. But I think, yeah, sums it up. Tonga, PNG, one and two. Yeah, I agree. When you see the list of players eligible to play for the Cook Islands, you think if they could roll them all out or even three quarters, then there'd be a genuine quarter final and semi final chance even. But. Yeah, I, I like PNG. I saw they're playing eleven bucks against Tonga this week, and the line's like twenty seven. Mm. I don't think they'll beat them, but I think that's pretty generous odds there. PNG toes up Fiji, and they're a passionate bunch. You don't want to run it straight at them, so I think there's going to be some big hits in that game. Yeah, I agree. Um, all three of those questions were kind of answered as we went through that. I'm going to ask you a couple more. Surly to you, I think you know this. Who is the number one ranked country uh, in rugby league at the moment? Obvious. New Zealand. Really? New Zealand. Uh, Blake, who's the lowest ranked country in uh, rugby league at the moment? From the World, are they in the World Cup? No, no. This is overall. There's 48 teams. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, New A. Latvia. 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 Who is the lowest ranked qualifier in the World Cup? Got to be Jamaica. Mm, mm. Jamaica ranked 21st in the world with Cook Islands only one spot ahead of them, 20th. Oh, I feel like the Cook yeah. Islands would put a cricket score on them if they played them. The likes of, it was it's quite a bizarre, I've got the rankings here. Where's USA? Uh, 27. Jeez. Um, so here, two teams uh, directly above Cook Islands are 19th, Turkey, and 18th, Czech Republic, uh, and 14th, higher than Italy, Wales, and Scotland, and just below Lebanon, the Netherlands. Uh, you can't underestimate them. 
Guess who? If you can guess, tell me who the eighth ranked team is. I'll eat my hat. Is it Brazil? Because randomly I saw Jose Aldo put up a video <laughs> ripping a Brazilian Rugby League World Cup jersey saying that he's backing the boys or girls. Can't remember which one. Brazil are ranked 40th. Are they in the women's one then? Because he was like, get behind them kind of thing. Either that or he's yeah, got bad HIA they're, problems. But. They're ranked 17th in the women's, so probably, yes. There we go. On your hose. Uh, but the eighth ranked team, Serbia. Serbia. Eighth. Rugby league. We're I'm looking at these teams here that are named in the World Cup, and I'm like, how is Serbia eighth? I am a chance of a dead set. Game yet, right? <laughs> I am a dead set chance of playing international <laughs> rugby league if I defect to Serbia right now. I promise you that. Oh well. well Makes you wonder fun. what their their paths are to get to the actual World Cup. Yeah, Is that good. Yeah. yeah. Unless they just play one or two games or three, whoever they play against. You know, is it like England in the women's rugby World Cup? They're good, but they win all these games playing against teams. <laughs> I don't know. So I like that from you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, I asked you guys to do some homework. Uh, not something Paul would, would put on as students, but I'm a tougher <laughs> teacher than Paul. Um, I've said for us to pick out two or three players each this World Cup to highlight uh, as ones to watch. Now, I'm going to go first because we've already talked about my first guy, but I've got Dominic Young from England. Uh, like I said, he was electric in that game against Fiji. Uh, had a great year in a terrible team for Newcastle. I'll be honest, I watched probably zero minutes of Newcastle footy unless they played the Warriors this year. Um, but Dominic Young, 20 games, 14 tries. And he was tied 13th for most tries in the season in a team that didn't do a lot of scoring tries. Mm. So that's pretty impressive in itself. He played six, uh, so he's in his NRL career, 18 tries in 26 games. And this year he averaged 130, 134 metres a game, had 67 tackle busts, 15 line breaks. I think he is in for a big tournament on home soil, especially now, I would dare say he's locked up that wing spot. Hmm. Dominic Young, my first guy off the, off the top. Surly? I went with Jerome Luai, just purely because... Whenever people talk the Panthers and how good they are, or even Origin, it's because of Nathan Cleary. So I think this is Luai's chance to kind of put his hand up. If Samoa to go a long way in the competition, then Luai's going to have to be that guy for them in the Haas. Because I think we all agree, Anthony Milford on his day, he's amazing, but he's not the game controller that a Cleary or someone like that is. So I think Luai will really have to put his hand up and put in some big performances. And if he can guide them to a semi final, then I think that'll shut up a lot of his critics. So I'll be interested in seeing how he goes, especially off the back of his uh, grand final aftermath. I'm sure there'll be a few people looking to put some shots on him. So I'll go with Jerome Luai. Is one of those critics uh, in this podcast? Yes, he is. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good player. Just want to see all these Panthers players that everyone keeps talking about play on the world stage. Um, I, hope, I hope you've picked a Panthers player then, Blake. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> My first ones, it's, it's not really two out there, but I just reckon his combination, um, he's paying $4, Josh Shadow Carr, the Fox, so favourite to score the most tries. But I just think um, I'm predicting him to play outside Latrell Mitchell. Um, I think Addo Carr has a massive to tournament on the back of him not making origin and really sticking it to everyone as he did the back end of the NRL season, after he didn't get named, he started going on a try-scoring spree and I think, you know, he hasn't had too many tastes in the green and gold jersey, so he'll be really wanting to put on a big display. And I think Latrell's going to have a big tournament and set Addo Carr up for about 20 or 30 tries. $4. It is favourite, it's short, but, I mean, to me, it's easy money. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not that short, $4. Mm -hmm. For those punters that don't know, that's four times your money. <laughs> um, all right, my next one, another one actually briefly touched on uh, by you, Silly, Josh Mansour. Mm -hmm. um, 
haven't seen a lot of the man source uh, in recent years. As you said, he's been that 18th or 19th man for the Bunnies. Um, but I think with those two two halves, the top quality halves and Dewey and um, Moses, he's going to see plenty of ball, even against the likes of the Kiwis. I think he he's he's got a real chance to sort of you know stick his hand up and say, hey, you know, don't don't forget about me. I've still got something to offer here. So I think maybe not in that New Zealand game, but the other three games, um, expecting big things from Mansource. Nice. Really? Um, Amone is my second one. I just think that he's going to be huge for Tonga. Um, he, he's a player that kind of came on pretty strongly for the Dragons this year, and people have high hopes for him as being a real standout footballer now. So, again, much like Luai, I think if they're going to go a long way in the tournament, he's going to have to put his hand up. And everyone kind of, when they question Tonga, it's to do with that spine. So a huge tournament from him. He's got the feet, he's got all the skill set to do it, and he's going to have a good platform to do it off. So I think he needs a big tournament. Yeah, I, I've um, just touched on what you said, Carl, about Mansour. And one of my, my players is Adam Dewey. So I just think his combo with Moses, what works so well for Dylan Brown is Moses is a control freak. He'll control the whole game and just let you play your running style footy. Obviously, it didn't work in the grand final. But, um, you know, throughout his career so far, and what we've been saying this year, Dylan Brown's been one of the best 5'8s in the game because he's been allowed to run. Dewey's biggest strength is his running game. And I remember back in the 2017 World Cup, he announced himself to the NRL stage, um, made his debut a couple of years later. But he started to get better every game he played with the Tigers this year. And I think... With Moses there controlling it, I think he'll be free to play just whatever he wants, do he? So I think he's going to have a massive, massive tournament and couldn't get them across into a semi final berth or a quarter final berth, shall I say first? Semi final berth? You're kidding yourself. I said quarter final. Pretty- I, I, I messed up. I meant to say quarter final, but <laughs> never know. Like I guess I agree with everything else you're saying, but wow. Just <laughs> yeah. Is this a potential. Uh, preview show to what we'll see in the Tigers in 2024 maybe hey mate uh, after Munster gave us a call and just said oh look I'm going to keep my talents in Melbourne we, we're just chucking it all on Mitchell now so it could quite possibly be the the show is that, is that how the conversation went down it wasn't yeah, oh, yeah. He, said, he said he when he rang he said oh look I love what you guys are doing and if I do have a chance to come over and get out of my Melbourne contract I will just the money was too good here I heard, I heard he allegedly, referenced... allegedly, hang on, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> I, I heard he referenced he hadn't slept since the storm season ended just because he wanted to join the Tigers so much, but he didn't know if he could leave Melbourne. So, yeah, I think if they'd won the comp, he would have came, but I think he just owes them a bit at the moment. And yeah. you know, I understand that as a, as a footy player, he owes the people. So I he... see he's back on the drink too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You know what it's going to be like over there. That's when you get the best out of money, Munster. <laughs> Kangaroos. I heard he just flat out said, I don't want to play for a shit team. Well, so, you'd be wrong, mate. You, I don't know who you heard that from, but that is wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, let's have a look. Any other any other players? I only did two. I've, I've got just – I've got one more. I had originally Tamalolo, but I've changed it. So you could probably put anyone in the full pack, but I went to Fafita because the start of the year, we would have had him in the Aussie World Cup squad. And as the season went on, he's obviously form dipped. He's been questioned about, is he really worth a million dollars? I say, you know, no halves, no worries for Tonga. I think Fafita, Tamalolo and the likes, that forward pack will carry him through to a finals berth. Nice. He is a big, scary human. Mm. Um, all right, let's have a look at the big games this week. Uh, we're going to probably focus, unless uh, Paul says otherwise, but we'll probably focus on the the big f- five teams, until maybe six, uh, England. So obviously this week, England, Samoa. We'll have a look at Australia, Fiji, New Zealand, Lebanon, Tonga, PNG. We'll start at the top, the first game of the tournament. England two dollars twenty three. This is outrageous. There's some more at a dollar sixty. 
uh Samoa three and a half point favorites the total is set at 41 and a half surly you said last week you're all in Samoa you said this week you may have changed a tune what's doing I think if this game was the last pool game then I'd be all in on Samoa still but I I think after watching those those hit out games especially for the Samoan team like so many combinations that have never played together it's full of superstars but they've kind of just pulled them all in from their NRL side so I think they need a couple games to get gelled together and I think they're going to be one of those teams that just get stronger throughout the tournament so first up opening up the world cup at home in front of the english fans you'd have to back england i reckon especially at that odds i think Samoa will probably be the only team that'll play their guys from the grand final as well because they're gonna have to i don't think the kiwis will and aussie have already said that they won't so Samoa are gonna have to roll them out and give this one everything they've got because that'll determine whether they finish first or second but yeah i'll be backing england i think just i hope Samoa will win yeah conflicting messaging there blake hey i said a lot of conflicting messaging there but yeah where are you at? um look obviously i'm not as high on samoa as i know everyone else is in the rugby league world um i think that obviously they're going to make the quarterfinals and after they lose this game to england um look, I certainly just predict everything's going to happen i think england at home you know they know the weather they know the short in goals they got the fans like Samoa don't have this and they haven't played a game there. Some of these guys are too young to, well, I don't think any of them would have played in the last World Cup that was there. Maybe Papali might have been the, or Papali might have been the last one, sorry, who would have played over in England many, many years ago. Um, so I don't think Samoa are up to it just yet. And yeah, I think, like I said, they'll finish second. But most of the games that we're going to cover you know, this, if you want to watch Rugby League in the World Cup, this is the week to do it because all the teams that are playing this week, it looks like um, will decide first and second in the pools. That's very true. I've just noticed that, if you see, as you've said that. They are the eight teams that we've predicted to make it through. Uh, I agree with everything you guys have said about this game. Uh, England, silly value, silly value. Mm. Uh, could, have, could have got them at $2.30 yesterday i think uh the bookies have seen seen something a little, a little bit of sense brought them into 223 but i'll i'll be having all of that thanks uh i agree i think some will get stronger as the tournament goes along uh but not not in this game three and a half points too that's oh, tell you what we're either going to have a lot of money or we're going to have no money at the end of the week <laughs> <laughs> um all right uh i Australia, unfortunately, we haven't got any teams out yet, which makes this uh, preview section a little bit niggly. We may have to move uh, move the pod to accommodate going forward. We'll see. But anyway, next one, Australia v. Fiji. Australia, a dollar and zero zero one. Fiji, $18 head-to-head. Australia, 38.5 point favourites. Total points is set at 55.5. And the Australian team is named, which is very nice of them. Any surprises in the team? Well, actually, Celia, I'll start with you. I presume we're all on the same page in terms of uh, results here. Yeah, I think Australia win, and pretty convincingly as well. Good to see Josh Adokar in the nine jersey. That actually got me really excited to see him play hooker. Unfortunately, not the case, but I think that'll be an entertaining watch. But is, is every team doing that number thing? Because I've heard they are. I've heard they're not. What's the go? I don't know. It's really confusing. Mm. Yeah. I know. It's big in the Super League and all that. And they're going to have their names on the back, which is great. I wonder if it comes into the NRL in the future and players can sell their jerseys, things like that. Might be something that happens. I know some people have been pushing for it for a while, but it's going to take a bit of adjusting. That's for sure. I think but, it, if you're going to do it, it needs like the Super League's a bit. There's, there's guys that just go with the stock standard jerseys and there's guys that have got their own numbers. I think you either do it or you don't. Like it's, so so in the, in the Super League, the case is they the team that starts the year, they're in that jersey. So if you get named for the first game as number one, you're number one for the year. No matter if there's injuries, you'll go everywhere else. So what it does is it allows the fans to go and buy your jersey with your name on it 
and then they might get you to sign it. It could be something you might be their favorite player. It's sort of like a collector's item. Yeah. So I don't mind it from Australia. And what I think we're missing out on is there's big charity op- opportunities here. People sell their jerseys to good causes and all that stuff. And, you know, it might have the number two might be Fox, Tualangi, uh, Whiten might play on the wing one game, someone, else, you know. But in this, we know what number they are. This is the guy that played in this jersey for that World Cup. So, look, good on by the Aussies. I mean, leave it to Australia to be the smartest thinking country in the World Cup to, to do it. Mate, even Mel doesn't like it. <laughs> he wants it. <laughs> He's done this thing. Blake, Blake, Blake retired for six years. He's still trying to sell his own brand. <laughs> um, yeah, Blake, I presume you're uh, you're all in Australia here. Yeah, I, I'm a bit queried about the bench, uh, but obviously, like Surly said, look, there's no grand final players playing. Um, whether they would have been picked or not, look, you know, we can argue whether Cleary is picked over DCE. We knew Mal wanted DCE from day dot, so you just don't know. Uh, but the bench is, is quite small. Like, Cotter's obviously going to play front row, which is a bit worrying when you think about the, the forwards and the outside backs for, Fiji, for Fiji. Pretty big, but I think Australia's class is just going to be too good. You'd have to think, like, a Campbell Gillard or someone's going to come into mm. that bench and really try boost them with some size. Otherwise, yeah, like, those are all guys on the bench that can play 80 minutes almost. So. Yeah, and you, you've got a hooker and a utility player. Mm. So it's a bit it's a bit weird, but... I think it's just for this first game. Yeah. Mm. And Ben Hunt at hooker over um, Harry Grant. Do we, do you think it's it's going to be a. Yeah. Sorry? That's, that's how they did it in Origin, isn't it? So. Mm. I, don't, I don't mind if Ben Hunt taking the grunt out of the game for Harry Grant to come on and do the run. I just, we spoke about New Zealand's lack of competition in the early stages i think the problem for australia not naming those players from the grand final is this is going to be their biggest test of the pool games to get their real lineup out and they're not doing that so they're going to fiddle around with combinations throughout the tournament come quarter final semi-final time they not might not be settled so could ruin them as well well will ruin them <clears throat> uh new zealand a dollar Zabalo won the Lebanon twenty-one dollars, forty-one and a half point favorites. New Zealand. Um, no total out yet. Michael Checker is coaching the Cedars. He also coaches the Pumas. This is both incredible and incredibly rattling at the same time. Uh, Surly, how do you see this one going? I think, isn't there like a chance that one of the games crosses over between a day or two as well, between the two teams? So, <laughs> I was talking about it on the radio, I heard it. So, yeah, he could be switching hats really quickly. He might even get old David Kidwell across to help him out in the league format as well with some defensive stuff. But, yeah, I think New Zealand will be too strong. I'm interested to see whether we do roll out our grand final players, the likes of your Leotas, et cetera, because I think, That'll have a big impact, and like we've already talked about, this should be our hardest pool game. So hopefully we play our strongest side and we get to see those combinations start to click. But I'm excited to see Lebanon play. I think they'll put up a decent fight, especially early, but then I think from about the 20-minute mark, much like we did on the weekend, we'll see us start to assert some dominance. Probably, I saw the line, that's probably about right, but maybe on the higher end as well. I do give Lebanon a chance to keep it under 40, but just. Yeah. Um, with the, the Chica thing, I think that's why they've got, you know, Robbie Farah there, Matt King as well from the Roosters. And Chica's done a lot of work under Trent Robertson with the Roosters. He's been, after he left the Wallab- uh, the Wallabies and also the Waratahs, he's done a lot of work with the Roosters. So some good pedigree there. Um, on the other side, I, I, I actually think New Zealand will name their number ones. I think the team we see play will quite possibly be their their strongest team so that i don't i've got nothing to back that up at the moment it's just the way i'm thinking knowing madge's character he's you know he wants to win everything very tough very rough um i think he'll just name the the best team he's got yeah i i hope they do Mm. i think it 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 sends a bit of a you know we're here we we want to win this and you have to win every game if you want to we don't have to, but you want to win every game. Yeah. Um, so, 
Do you? It's, then you go on the other side of the pool. From I was just going to say it's probably in, in our best interest if we <laughs> if we lose the first game, perhaps. But oh, if that's your guys' way of thinking. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, you guys could be thinking the same. Uh, next game, Tonga heaps more value in this one. Tonga dollar two uh, to PNG eleven dollars head to head twenty six and a half point favorites. For me, this is some value uh, for the underdogs. I think. Um, 26 and a half points in the first game of the competition. I know Tonga had to hit out last week, but not their full team. I think PNG for me are a chance at keeping it uh, a little bit tighter than the 27 points, Surely. Yeah, I agree. I think I mentioned it earlier, but PNG, that it's the only country where it leads their national sport. They're bloody proud of it too. They always go out and give it a hundred percent. They love the physical stuff, the bash and crash. And that's, exactly what they'll get up against Tonga. So I think they'll be up for it. I do think Tonga will win in that 13-plus range, but I like that line of, of under 27. Um, I, I think PNG will, will keep it close enough for that one to come home. And I'm excited to see Coates and Olam team up again. Um, I think that they could cause some real headaches throughout this tournament as being that duo. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of opposite you guys. I, I first, I can't wait to see who they name at seven and six. Mm. So I'm wondering whether they chuck the young fella Katoa from Penrith at seven and then have Amon you'd think would be one half. But I know Lola here, Tui Lola here has been over there. He's done well for Tonga in the past, played from, I believe, when they beat Australia last game um, and went to a Challenge Cup final this year, just signed a new deal in England. So he sort of found his footing over in England. And... Yeah, I, look, I think they can do a job. But that mid-year test when PNG played, they sort of got over the Fiji and sort of through the middle and things like that. And Tane Mill, who we know is an NRL player, was playing 13 that day. I've mentioned how big this Tongan pack is. And if he names the their number ones, I think they win this and win this very well. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Not like us, Blake. Not like us. <laughs> All right, let's get to some betting and wrap this bad boy up uh, for the week. We'll start with you, Blake, because you were the loser uh, in the NRL competition. Just in loser. Case you <laughs> the loser, the one that came last. Uh, your best head-to-head. -head. Um, best head-to-head, -head, look, the, the value's very short all across, but I'm I'm going to get England $2.23. I just think they're good things. Said it last week, I'm riding it too. I feel like I've, 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 we should maybe, with this limited value, change it to just best bet, perhaps. Mine, mine wouldn't change. Uh, but uh, for this week, we'll leave it head to head, and we'll let we'll let Paul sort out the. Uh, yeah, he chose not to be here. It's his fault. Um, Surely. Yeah, I I also went England purely because the the dollar I ones don't tickle my fancy. So England, good value and a good bet. Yep. Also, England, $2.23 for me. Blake, your best total? Uh, Australia, Fiji, over 55.5 at $1.85. I think they run up a score on the Fijians. Yeah, so, I, I had England, Samoa, over 41.5. I went Australia Fiji over fifty five and a half. I had a dollar eighty seven. Oh, well, I'll take the dollar eighty seven. Well, no, no, no. You take the dollar eighty five, and I'll take. Sorry, it is dollar eighty five. Uh, so this will happen in that other the NRL tournament, silly. <laughs> we put extra. A couple of cents here and one there. Multi anchor, late. Uh, I've gone Australia with the alternate line minus twenty nine and a half at a dollar thirty seven. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's even more. I went Scotland head to head against Italy at a dollar twenty three. <laughs> oh, I, th I, yeah, there, there could be ups. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think Italy are a chance. It's going to be a tight one. That one. I'm excited to watch that game. 
I got Larry. If you, you guys have gone, I went uh, <clears throat> an alternate point start. I went PNG plus 23 and a half at $2.15. I like that. Mm. Uh, best roughy, Blake. Uh, I've gone England, 11 to 20 points, $8. Nice. I like that. I too, like, I too like that. That's not what I had. Didn't look at that market. Smart from me. I went really leery. P&G, head to head, 11 bucks. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Don't like my time. Right of the cages early. Yeah. Uh, I went for England, 13 plus at $6. Against someone. Uh, and a four leg multi, please, Blake. Of course, overball multi buster in play for this. Yep. Uh, gone the four games, uh, just the line. So I've gone Ireland minus 32 and a half over Jamaica, I believe. Is it Ireland? Yep. Yeah, minus yep. 32 and a half. I've gone Italy plus 12 and a half against Scotland. Uh, the Aussies minus 38 and a half and England plus three and a half. $12. Nice. Silly. I have gone Scotland one to 12 at three bucks. Aussie, Fiji over 55 and a half. PNG, the line 26 and a half. And England head to head against Samoa. That's paying 23 bucks. Nice, silly. Uh, and I've gone England head to head at 2.23. Australia minus 38.5. PNG plus 26.5. And, and Italy plus 12.5. $14.58 Ooh. for that one. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have same game multis. Hopefully, they will all be in play uh, come the weekend. Same with. Uh, Power play is not yet available, but once the teams are named, they will be out, hopefully, when you are listening to this. Mm. Boys, anything else you want to add uh, on the first week of the Rugby League World Cup before we head out? Uh, yep, Addo Carr to get a hat-trick and almost so that $4 top try scorer market up. I was just going to say, I think this is a good weekend for wingers to score a lot of tries, so you could get some same-game multis that might not be paying a lot, but I think a lot of them will come in. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully those same game multis are all there and available. Uh, lads, thanks very much for uh, another episode. Quite a clean episode. Mm. Malati, if you're listening, which I know you won't be, we did not miss you, mate. Hey, it's OT. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, all right, boys, thank you. Uh, thank you all for listening, and we will be back next week uh, with another edition of The Advantage Line.